guest tonight is one of the smartest people on the planet. Just because you think you know nothing about physics doesn't mean you don't know the bits that count, like Pythagoras, Albert Einstein and Doc Brown from Back to the Future. 1.21 If my guest tonight is right, your great-grandkids that also don't know anything about physics will know the name of Brian Green. Science is not a subject. Science is your ticket to understanding the world and the universe, and then it's with you for life. Please welcome Brian Green! Oh, oh, welcome! Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Now, you study super string theory. Now, it's been called possibly the most difficult branch of, of theoretical physics. Can you explain it to me in 15 seconds? <laughs> String theory tries to find the unified theory that Albert Einstein was looking for even on his deathbed but didn't find. It puts together general relativity and quantum mechanics in one consistent framework and it may describe everything in the universe. Wow. Wow. That's very impressive. I'm just curious, what if you're wrong? Like, you've gone all in on yeah. super string theory. What if, what if you get it wrong? Have you wasted your life? I would actually be thrilled, and I'm not being facetious here, if we could prove the theory wrong, that would be progress, and we'd move on to other things. And that's what science is about. I'm not wedded to one approach. I'm wedded to finding the truth. And if string theory is not the truth, I want to know now and move on. Yeah, but come on. No, I'm serious. <laughs> you've, had, you've had lots of traditional sort of eureka moments where you've made a discovery, you've really made a breakthrough. What is that moment like when you know something that no one else well, in the world it, it, knows? Well, it's a rare moment, and there's nothing quite like it. When you stare at something and you feel like you're looking deeper into reality than anyone has gone before, there's some kind of euphoria that's associated with that. So we live for those moments, but a typical scientist has them maybe once, two, three times. If you're Einstein, you have it many times, but nobody's Einstein, but Einstein. So... So who's the first person you call? <laughs> like, when you nailed it, like, who, who was the first person you called? Jeez, you know, I don't actually think I called anybody at you all. You didn't bring Neil deGrasse Tyson and go, boom! <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence Krauss, next boom! Time. Next time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, all right, like, sitting here talking to you about physics, like, I'm excited about it, I'm interested in it. Why was it that physics was boring for me at school and I, and I quit and, I, and yeah. I did something else? I mean, it's a common story. I mean, a lot of times when kids encounter science in the classroom, it's taught as a collection of facts, right? Formula they have to memorize, spit back on an exam. And that's all fine. You've got to have the details. But parallel to that, kids need to be introduced to the big ideas that the details can explain. So when you learn that the math that you're struggling with can tell you how the universe began, where time comes from, how the universe will evolve, what the fundamental forces are, it makes you want to learn the details because those are such big, cool ideas. So, so in Australia, the, statistically, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but, but our kids at school aren't doing well when it comes to maths and science. That is a graph of our performance. And we barely have enough maths and science to know that's a bad graph. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what do we need to do as a country to improve yeah. the way that science is taught? Yeah, I, I think it's a whole cultural shift that has to happen. It's not just the classroom. We have to value science and scientists the way we value great movie stars, right? I mean, it has to be something that kids aspire to be because the culture says this is vital to our existence. This is vital to a full life. Just like great music or great literature or great theatre, right? That's obvious. We all want to engage with those subjects. We have to have the same cultural focus on science. Did you get good grades when you were at high school? I did were pretty well, guy? yeah, I did all right. Do you think grades are important? I think grades are garbage. Really? Yeah, yeah, totally. Because the way we assess kids over and over again, exam, quiz, exam, as opposed to really seeing if they're absorbing the ideas, if they can take in the information and do something with it, as opposed to just repeat what they did on a homework assignment. I can't stand the way we assess kids. Like, that sounds great when you say it, but if, if, if there's a parent who goes to a parent-teacher night... I agree with you. And, yeah. the, ..and the teacher says, you know... John's not getting good grades. Yes. Sorry, John, but you need to work harder. But no, I it says Johnny's not getting good grades. Yeah. I mean, that parent is, has to freak out about that. It has to be I, worried that the kid's not performing academically. I, I agree with that completely. But you have to bear in mind our so-called educational institutions are not dedicated to education per se. They're dedicated to credentialing, to saying this kid can do that or this kid can do this. 
And that's not what education is about. I don't know what the answer is to this, which is the bottom line question that you're asking, but I can't stand the pressure that we put on kids to perform on these quizzes and exams. It's, yeah. not, it's not the way you get people excited. So why was Einstein so famous? Einstein radically changed our understanding of the world, right? He changed our understanding of space and time and matter and gravity. And for one individual to take a vision of how the world works that everybody bought into before he existed, and by the time he left the Earth, we had a completely transformed vision of reality, yeah, that is worthy of attention. Can you explain something to me so I understand it? How did he change the way that we understand the universe? Well, we all learn about Isaac Newton and gravity when we're in high school, right? But Einstein didn't think that Newton had gone far enough in his explanation. Now, Einstein came to this idea, actually, by a one key insight that he had in 1907 that he called the happiest thought of his life. Great. What was it? Was it's... it a puppy with a milkshake? What was it? The happiest thought of his life, it turns out, is imagining a person falling from the roof of a building. Everyone has dark days. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and the key thing is he realized that as this person's falling, they don't feel their own weight. They feel weightless. It's as if gravity has been canceled out by virtue of them going into this motion. A deep connection between a certain kind of motion, freely falling, accelerated motion, and the force of gravity. It's that link between motion and gravity that lets them, after eight more years of work, to come up with the theory that we just were talking about. Now, can you show, show it to me in action? The, uh, the falling notion that can make gravity seem to go away? Can you I jump out I of can. a window? I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I can do the next best thing. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's a see A little it. demonstration. Can Great. we do it over there? Yeah, let's, yeah, do, yeah, it. let's do it. All right. Yeah. Here's one we prepared earlier. Please, come on over. Now, this is the ABC, so please be careful. We couldn't afford it if you sued us. Now, so if you just climb up the stairs... Does it, does it bother you that you have to do this to explain things to people? It is, it is so degrading. No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love being in cherry pickers. Here we go. All right, now... Are we now, going is up this a little Is higher? this enough height, or can we get a bit more hole? There yeah, we go. Yeah, let's do it. That is good. So, yep. all right, talk us through what we're going to yeah, do Yeah, so this is a, a bottle that has water in it, and the bottle actually has some holes in it, which means that as I take off the top, the water starts to spray. Now, if Einstein's right, the water will stop spraying out if I let this drop because gravity right now is pulling on the water, but if I let it go, I should cancel out gravity and watch to see if the spraying stops. Three, two, one. That is amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah, is it? It completely stopped. Yep. Completely stopped leaving the bottle. That's right. So we canceled out gravity by letting it go into free fall. And with that, Einstein is en route to the general theory of relativity. And that is the most exciting thing ever to occur on this show. Would you please thank, thank Brian Green? Thank you. Brian is appearing at the World Science Festival in Brisbane, which starts today. And next week, he has talks in Sydney and Melbourne for thinking. Once again, please thank Brian Green. Thank you.